Okay, so I get an awful lot of questions from time to time and, you know, something that's very topical globally at the moment in animal health is a disease called Mycoplasma bovis, which is affecting herds in New Zealand since July in 2017. And they're now uh, beginning a mass eradication program to try and get this problem under control, eradicate the disease. So a lot of questions about it, it's a disease because of the work I do with, in Irish dairy to beef systems, I see a lot of it and I've diagnosed a lot of it. And in dairy farms, I've seen it causing lameness and mastitis. So what is it? This video is a, a kind of my opinion on it. Okay, Mycoplasma bovis is a bacteria. And why is it different? Um, every bacteria, and most bacteria have cell walls, which allow them to survive in the environment, different uh, attributes. One of the things that cell wall is important for when we're controlling disease and treating it, is antibiotics uh, will affect the cell wall, and that's how they kill bacteria, particularly the penicillins. So our antibiotic choice is limited when it comes to mycoplasma bovis. So that's one of the reasons why it's different. The other thing um, that it's, it, 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 can, it can have is a biofilm. And biofilm is kind of like a sticky layer, uh, how would I describe it? Um, a slime that coats the bacteria, which makes antibiotic penetration even more difficult. So a lot of bacteria can have this biofilm, um, but that mycoplasma has it. So biofilm and no cell wall make it difficult for treatment, okay? Um, so what diseases does mycoplasma bovis typically cause? So it can affect calves and cows, and I've seen a lot in calves. And you know, are our diagnostics getting better, or is the fact that mycoplasma bovis are we seeing more? Uh, are we seeing more of it? I would say absolutely. My experience and my opinion is we're seeing more of it as a problem here in Ireland and globally. It's an issue. So what does it cause? In cows, it causes a number of things. It can cause uh, middle ear problems, middle ear infections, respiratory disease, lung lung problems, pneumonia, and joint issues. So three distinct things. If you think about that as well, how is it spread within calves? It can be spread if it's from the middle ear to the respiratory tract to the, the joints. It's spread in the blood and often getting in through the tonsils of animals. Okay, so that's something to remember. It can cause chronic caseonecrotic pneumonia, which is kind of like a cheesy, cakey pneumonia. It can be quite chronic and cause ill trip. And when it's in calves, it can affect a lot of calves. So how is it spread calf to calf? Through what we call vomits or aerosols. Typically, if it's ingested through the tonsils, or that's what's taught to get in, it, you know, if, if, if calves are close contact, if they're coughing, and if air quality is poor, particularly, and I love them, automatic feeders, if hygiene is poor around them, you know, any vomit that's getting on that, it can spread, the bacteria can spread from one calf to another. Particularly, we see massive issues if there's any other factors like colostrum, housing, feeding, uh, secondary diseases if there's other issues there it's really can get in and cause a lot of problems particularly stress on calves and you think about dairy to beef a lot of these calves are involved with transportation and uh, long periods of time if that that can be an issue and that's potentially where I have seen uh, mycoplasma come along so the clinical symptoms were spire disease lung l l pneumonia joint infections ear infections a lot of this year in our spring so what happens is the bacteria gets in not in the outer ear but the inner ear the middle ear where balance occurs so you can often have, have the ear drop with it um, you can have balance effect and there's a nerve running along there as well so you can have facial paralysis sometimes but so there are the symptoms in calves in cows what's mycoplasma bovis uh, what does it cause it causes two significant diseases mastitis uh, really unresponsive mastitis and if you look at the milk sometimes my experience I'm not always um, it can be kind of sandy or grainy if you let it sit overnight particularly it can separate the two layers it can also because it's spread in blood it can affect the joints, um, fetlocks or hocks, and again, very unresponsive to treatment. Obviously, there's lots of reasons for mastitis, there's lots of reasons for hock swelling and fetlock swelling, but it's one, it's some of the symptoms. The mastitis can be clinical, so clinical cases, you see change in the milk or sick, generally milk changes, and it can cause cell count issues as well. So there are the symptoms that it can occur on, on farm. Depending how management is, in my experience, it can be, you know, they can be, you know, isolated cases to quite a number of cases, it could be significant disease. Let's think about how it's spread from farm to farm and the challenge New Zealand is facing as it was, uh, July 17, 2017, it was, it was foreseen how is it spreading from farm to farm, remembering it can, if it can affect the quarter uh, in milk um, and it can be spread through vomits. So, okay, 
Waste milk, okay, this is leading me on nicely to waste milk. So if we think about it in our cast, we're always talking about not feeding waste milk, but it seems like such a waste not to feed mastitic milk or antibiotic treated milk to calves. Two things, obviously. One of the things is when there's antibiotics in it, you're giving low levels of antibiotics to calves. It's not good for antibiotic resistance. But also, you're feeding waste milk, you're feeding pathogens potentially to calves. Now that, um, sometimes you get away with it, but where you particularly will see issues is we, you will see it with mycoplasma, uh, where mycoplasma mastitis has been seen, and it doesn't even have to be mastitis, because some cows, they're carriers of it, and they can be carriers of it and spread it for up to, the literature says about a year, now I'm not definite on it, but you know, quite a long period of time, so mastitic milk going into calves, uh, it can really, it, 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 it can, it, it, that's how you can, you can spread it within farm, so waste milk is a big issue, calves themselves can spread it from, from animal to animal, you know, with any aerosol contact, um, lungs, it goes into the tonsils, so this becomes like everything, calves particularly, hygiene is so important, especially around feeding utensils and anywhere areas where calves are congregating or feeding. Um, so once infected, it can spread for a long, long time. So everyone wants to know, and the question is, and people would love to say, what do you treat mycoplasma with? Now, this is really down to, and I don't want to get into it, it's, it's something that farmers and vets have to decide about treatment options, but we are limited knowing um, that because of its challenge around biofilm and because there's no cell wall, we've limited choices, but definitely some of the things to look out for on, with mycoplasma is your cure rate around calf pneumonia, your cure rate on mastitis, your cure rate on these middle ear chronic infections, what's working and what's not working. There is some options. How do we make a diagnosis of mycoplasma. First of all, we have to be suspicious of it. Some of the clinical symptoms, I mean, there, you know, there's lots of things that can cause um, mastitis, lots of things that can cause lameness, lots of things that can cause pneumonia. But you know, if you're seeing some of these together, and often we don't see them all together, we can see uh, one or the other. But you know, particularly this year, I have talked to a lot of vets and they're seeing these ear drops and these chronic infections in the middle ear uh, compounded with respiratory disease and ill treff, poor performance in calves. So in calves with pneumonia, if you want to go back retrospectively after the spring, if you've had it, you can blood test animals at six to eight months, maybe closer to the eight months, looking for antibodies. So what happens in, in the body is when a, a bacteria or a virus goes into the blood or into the into the body or calf's body, these bacteria will cause a, an antibody to be created and the immune system will react to it. So what we're doing in hindsight is we're going or we're going when we're blood testing, we're checking for these antibodies that have latched onto the bacteria that are helping the immune system destroy it. The presence of these antibodies in blood are fairly indicative in eight month old animals that you've had a mycoplasma problem. Um, so we're looking for antibodies. At the time, nasal swabs can be useful. Bloods can be useful for, for, for point in time. And, and particularly with mastitis or joint, joint problems, you can take aspirates from the joint or milk samples. Um, I suppose the key thing is for control, and if you look at New Zealand's situation now, because they're trying to control it, um, eradication, uh, you know, diagnosis of the, pro of the problem farms, controlling it, culling, um, control long term in, in where we have problems is if you haven't had an issue with mycoplasma, it goes back to biosecurity. And I'm actually, I'm going to cover biosecurity within this lecture separately. Um, you can, it's about two and a half minutes. If you want to hear me talk about biosecurity, you can skip forward. But it's really, really important. And this, again, I think this New Zealand hit situation for global dairy farming and farming in general highlights the importance of biosecurity and disease control. As regards uh, control on farm, antibiotics still play a key role versus infections and antibiotic choice along with your vet, you know, macrolides, oxytetracyclines and fluoroquinolones with a varying results but again picking those with your veterinarian is very very important. Management where we see mycoplasma as an issue we always want to look at it and I've seen it on farms where management is excellent but you know where particularly where there's management weaknesses it can be pretty horrific in calves where, where things go wrong because you know if this for example if you have poor cholesterol, poor air quality, uh, and you have mycoplasma coming in, you know, it's pretty devastating what can happen. Um, stress is another one with mycoplasma. It's something that I'm increasingly focusing in on all the time. So mycoplasma, yes, it's a significantly uh, significant disease in dairy farms. It can affect beef cattle as well. It's of economic relevance, performance relevant, animal welfare, it can affect animal welfare. High levels of infection, um, 
varying levels of mortality, but it's a disease we really need to, you know, thankfully the testing is getting more accurate. When we, act, when we diagnose and we need control plans, we need to really think about how it's being spread and minimizing the risk there. Utensils and hygiene is a big one. And of course, I think it really highlights a couple of things. What we do with waste milk, from our mastitis cows and also biosecurity to, to minimize the spread of disease between farms and in biocontainment when disease does spread that we minimize the spread of it within farms. That's it. That's my opinion on mycoplasma bovis.